Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Devotsia Mentality! Play Sonic the Hedgehog 3 Angel Island Revisited! Yeah, your alternative, unfortunately, to a decompiled version like there is for Sonic 1 and 2, is to get this little, uh, baby. Basically, it's, it takes a ROM of Sonic 3 and Knuckles, and converts it into this game that gives you a whole lot of options and achievements and whatnot to help enhance the experience like it would be in the decompiled versions of those other games. Your alternative to this would be to uh, get another actual ROM called Sonic 3 Complete, which does a lot of the same things but unfortunately doesn't have widescreen support, and, well, I figured I'd go for the widescreen support sort of deal. Now, it is highly encouraged if you get Sonic 3 Air to get, to use the ROM from the, uh, to, from the uh, Steam store, you know, to, to buy it off Steam and use the ROM from that. But it is entirely possible to, if you have an existing compatible Sonic 3 and Knuckles ROM already, to just use that. And since Sonic 3 and Knuckles is my favorite game series, I already had a whole load of ROMs that I could have used for this, and I happened to find the right one. Because <laughs> Sonic 3 and Knuckles is uh, my, it is tied as far as I'm concerned for my favorite classic Sonic game. Like between this and Sonic CD, I, I can't make up my mind which is my favorite because I, I love them both. Although I say Sonic 3 and Knuckles, because uh, that's a thing to just take into consideration, is that Sonic the Hedgehog 3 was not necessarily one of the most complete games when it was initially released on the Sega Genesis. And in order to make up for it... Oh, great. Underwater has this muffled effect to it. Which I didn't have to include, but that's another option in the game. And I thought that would just be amusing. But yeah, one of the things about the, the original Sonic the Hedgehog 3 is that it actually was not in a complete state. Like, it was complete enough when it was released that you could get a decent enough adventure out of it, but... Their original plans for this game were actually pretty ambitious, to the point where there was a good chunk of levels that they had to excise from Sonic 3 before releasing it. And the only way that they could get it released was through an expansion called Sonic & Knuckles, a separate game that would be released later in the year... I think, was it 93 or 94? I don't remember. Later in 93, I'm going to say... I think. Either way, it was released later on in the same year as Sonic the Hedgehog 3 as a special lock-on cartridge, where you could take Sonic the Hedgehog 3 and plug it into the Sonic and Knuckles cartridge and expand it into a game called Sonic 3 and Knuckles, which was, in essence, the complete game. Now, if you have a ROM for Sonic 3 and Knuckles, or, you know, you just have the Sonic 3 and Knuckles uh, that comes up from Steam, you know, you could use that as the basis for starting up Sonic 3 Air, and, well, you'd have this lovely gem to actually play as you're collecting gems. Yeah, collecting Chaos Emeralds in this game is, I think I have, uh talked about this in previous playthroughs, you just find hidden rings throughout the different levels, 
and play the special stages to completion to get the Chaos Emeralds. In this case, it's the Blue Sphere game, and... Uh, I won't say that Blue Sphere is my favorite type of special... is my favorite special stage style, but I definitely like it more than most other special stages. And, you know, I can, I, I can play it any day as a result. And that's another benefit of Sonic 3 Air, is that, like in the decompilations, although I think it was like Sonic 3 Complete, ROM, the Sonic 3 Complete ROM that actually did this first, or at least popularized it. I don't know if it was in some other ROM before it was in Sonic 3 Complete, but yeah, you can actually uh, get Tails to actually help you out and fly to places by holding up and double jumping, although double jumping in this game actually has some alternative effects. Like, if Sonic doesn't have a shield, he'll do the insta-shield technique, which just a split second where he'll create a little field around him that would extend his damage and kind of protect him against certain things if you time it right. Uh, if he has an elemental shield on, and elemental shields are the only ones that you can get in Sonic 3 and Knuckles. So, you can't get, like, a normal shield. But, with an elemental shield on, Sonic, his, uh... He will trade his insta-shield technique for whatever technique he would associate with... The specific shield element. For the electrified shields, he can do a double jump. For the fire shields, he can do uh, air dash. And with the bubble shields, he can do a bounce. So Sonic does have a lot of movement options in this game to help improve his capabilities and make himself not, you know, completely vanilla like I was arguing about in Sonic 2 and other Sonic games. At the same time, though, it doesn't exactly sit well with me as the options you get with Tails and Knuckles on the simple count of those shields are not permanent power-ups. And if you happen to lose one shield because the element does not agree with other elements in the game, like with the fire shield, where it burned out because we doused it in water. Then... Ultimately, it just... Eh. <laughs> you lose it, and that's that. And... Eh, it's why, as, as much as I like the shield power-ups in this game, it, it's still kind of doesn't sit well with me that beyond these power-ups that are ultimately limited and potentially not available at all times, Sonic is still the vanilla play mode. And of course, the problem that I was getting at is that doing a double jump with one of these power-ups makes it hard to actually latch onto Tails' hands so that you can actually go flying places with him. Because you'll press double jump and then you'll end up bouncing straight down or going into a dash or going well above where his hands are willing to grasp you. But I still appreciate it anyway. You know, it still extends the existing abilities. And it's it, it's welcome enough. Uh, but Blue Spheres. Uh, in this special stage, your objective is to pass over all the blue balls. <laughs> in, this, uh, in these stages, to turn them red. If you happen to bump into a red sphere... 
Uh, well, you're knocked out of the stage. You did a boo-boo, and that's not... That's... That's no good. We're going after the blue ones, not the red ones. And, of course, there are also bumper balls. And one special thing about collecting blue spheres is that if you surround blue spheres in red spheres by, you know, going around them in the sequences like I had, you can turn all those spheres into rings. Therefore, making them safe to pass over. Sorry about that. Got something in my mouth. Oh, for crying out loud. And, you know, uh, the elemental shields have other benefits, too. Like the bubble shield allows you to breathe on, stay breathing underwater, the fire shield protects you from fire elements, and the electric shield will protect you from electric elements, on the rare occasion that there are any electric elements in this game to be protected from. And, you know, all the elemental shields also have the added bonus of deflecting certain projectiles. Not all projectiles, mind you, but... Certain projectiles can be deflected, and, you know, you'll you'll be grateful for that. Oh. Yeah, and that's another thing that you can opt to do in this version of the game as far as the in-game options are, go. That thing would usually, typically, only drop bombs behind where Sonic is on the screen, therefore making it not much of a threat as long as you just kept holding forward. But in, the D in Sonic 3 Air, you can opt to make the uh, bomb patterns a little bit more uh, problematic in that sense. Also, first uh, encounter with Dr. Robotnik in this game, and uh, defeated. And we've got the animal capsule open, so we got through Act 2. Of uh, Angel Island Zone. As we move forward, though, what's this up here? Who is that? Knucklehead! Yeah, this is the game that introduced Knuckles the Echidna. Uh, Red Echidna, who's got a bit of a vendetta against people who invade his territory. Because of this island that we're on? Yeah, this is basically his land. And, uh, he doesn't like trespassers. And, uh, yeah. So, to just carry on the whole Death Egg thing, at the end of Sonic the Hedgehog 2, we defeated Dr. Robotnik, and destroyed his... Come on. And destroyed his death egg. Or so he thought. It wasn't completely destroyed. It fell back to Earth. And crashed on this floating island called Angel Island. A mysterious island that was in the sky, but has been grounded because... Well, a space station landed on it. I think you'd have trouble staying airborne if a space station landed on you, too. So, Eggman lands on this island with the Death Egg, and he needs to figure out a way to get it back into the air. And with Knuckles, he thinks that he has at least a way to keep Sonic busy while he tries to figure that out. But, there's also the matter of the things that Knuckles, are, Knuckles is trying to protect. That being the Master Emerald. Yes, the seven Chaos Emeralds are one thing that Eggman could possibly use to conquer the world with. But on this Angel Island, this mysterious island in the sky, he has discovered a Master Emerald. One big Super Emerald that is actually capable of controlling the power of the Chaos Emeralds and 
giving off as much power as the Chaos Emeralds themselves. And he wants that to help him conquer the world. And, uh, it's up to Sonic and Tails to once again try and stop him, also working around this, uh, Knuckle-headed echidna who seems to think that we're the problem instead of the ro instead of the man with the robots. Also, you may have noticed that in this game, uh, there's more of those star posts with the circles of stars around them, like there was in Sonic the Hedgehog 2. But in this game, those star post uh, star rings aren't for you know chaos emerald-based specials special stages, so there for uh, bonus stages that we'll get into later. I'm pretty sure. I think. I, I don't remember. Uh, but yeah, Sonic 3, Sonic 3 and Knuckles, another game from my, uh, youth, one of the first Sonic games that I played, and I think I talked about this, it was through the Sonic and Knuckles PC collection, where, well, basically all, you could play Sonic 3, Sonic and Knuckles, or Sonic 3 and Knuckles together, and, uh... It's how I experienced the game the first time. And there was a part of me that kind of wanted to... Uh, they kind of wanted to try and play that for the sake of this uh, Let's Play. Because I figured, oh, they have mods for it. We could actually improve it, give it better music instead of that sequenced MIDI stuff. But... You know, I, I did all that, and then I figured out, oh wait, at the end of the day, this is still the original, ugh, excuse me, PC version of this game, and, you know, even with the improvements, it's not, mm, it's not quite, well, this. So I, I figured it was just in my better interest to try and play this, uh... ROM enhancement? I'm not exactly sure what to call it, but... Sonic 3 Angel Island Revisited rather than try to get the... Sonic and Sonic 3 and Knuckles PC port up and running. I mean, I did get it up and running, but I didn't want to show it for this Let's Play. I got this version and it works so here I am not that it matters tremendously you know I, I could sit down and play any version of Sonic 3 and Knuckles any day and have fun and be pleased and not want for much more because I mean, let's face it, this is, you know, for as much as people tote that Sonic the Hedgehog 2 is the better uh, classic Sonic game most of the time, I'm, I, I will hail that Sonic 3 and Knuckles is the better game, fight me IRL polls. <laughs> this is the better Sonic game, this is an amazing Sonic game, there's a lot you can do, there's still a lot of good speed. All these slopes and whatnot. Heck, this water level is fun. Even when you go into the water, things are still going real fast. But it also has some nice elements of exploration to it. And some decent rewards for that, you know, with the special stages. And also, as I was complaining about before, you don't have to find 50 rings before you go into any of these hidden locations. You just find the hidden location, jump in, and there's your chance getting a Chaos Emerald. 
I say chance because, you know, of course there's no guarantees. You might flub it up and bump into a red sphere that you didn't mean to. Or just lose track of your footing because one of the things about the Blue Sphere Special Stage is as much as I like them, they speed up after a certain point and because everything's sort of grid-based, one wrong turn or one failure to make a right turn will screw things up instantaneously. As I'm, yeah, sure to demonstrate. <sighs> but hey, I have five so far. It's not as much progress as I would have made it. And, uh, it's not nearly as much progress as I would have made by this point in Sonic 2, but then, then again, I spent all that time in Emerald Hill trying to get the Chaos Emeralds. Here, you don't have as many opportunities up front to get the Chaos Emeralds. At least not in this half of the game. Like, in the back half of the game, for all the Sonic and Knuckles portions, from what I recall, I think there's just a, a whole truckload of special stage rings in that half of the game, and we'll talk about when, that when we get to that, because uh, that's a whole other thing in and of itself. Because it's just like... Why would you need to collect the emeralds still in the back half of the game if you've already done it in the first half of the game? Well... That's uh, another bonus of the Sonic & Knuckles lock-on technology, is that it actually did give you a reason to keep looking for emeralds after that point. But we won't dwell on that. Instead, we'll just dwell on... Well, getting this done, hopefully. Because, you know, we're not stuck in the green and or emerald hill. We're already in Hydro City. Or Hydrocity. Because the, the name of this level isn't parsed Hydro Space City. It's all one, all cobbled together into one world. Hydricity. So there's tends to be some arguments over the what is the valid way to actually pronounce the name of this stage. I pronounce it hydrosity to annoy people. But yeah. And if I hadn't flubbed up, I would have all the Chaos Emeralds by the end of this zone, but I screwed up, so I'm going to have to go back to that one special stage that I made an oopsie on. After I complete this one, of course. Jim Ghetto. So that's six emeralds. So I'm in basically the same place I was at by the end of the first part of Sonic 2. <laughs> and this is the first part of Sonic 3, so... Yay, consistency! <laughs> Water slides am fun. Ugh. Annoying little prick. But yeah. I, I just love the sense of, you know, going up and down and all around and all over the place. And also having a lot of things to look for in this game compared to Sonic 2. What is that echidna problem with us anyway? We didn't do anything. We're just here because... 
We're trying to stop that fat man, and you're doing nothing to help us. In fact, it seems like you're helping him most of the time. Yeah, and this is one of the bonus stages. Uh, kind of a different take on the Sonic the Hedgehog 1 special stages. Combined with, like, a slot machine thing in the middle. Your goal basically here is to, well, collect rings. And I think if you collect 50 rings, you are you get a continue. Not that it matters. Sonic 3 had uh, save games, so it's kind of irrelevant. I mean, unless you started the game in no save mode. Thank you, Tails. Okay, I don't know what I was thinking there. I was thinking that maybe that he would be done doing that by the time that it ran out. <sighs> yep, yeah, and, 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 and down you go. Egghead. But that does it for this part of Let's Play Sonic the Hedgehog 3 Air. And I'd like to thank you absolutely everyone for watching. As always, there will be links in the description below on my very social media outlets as well on my coffee page if you want to follow up on that. This is the Devossia Mentality, out.